of the Republican 2024 field is growing again with former Vice President Mike Pence officially announcing his bid today, along with North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum. In his campaign kickoff speech in Iowa, Pence took direct aim at his former boss, accusing Donald Trump of abandoning conservative principles on abortion. He also said the former president, quote, endangered my family and everyone at the Capitol on January 6th. But the American people deserve to know that on that day, President Trump also demanded that I choose between him and the Constitution. Now voters will be faced with the same choice. I chose the Constitution, and I always will. For more on a big day, we bring in Caitlin Huey Burns and Robert Costa. They both join us now. Caitlin is CBS News' political correspondent, joining us right here in studio. Bob is CBS News' chief election and campaign correspondent. Right there in Des Moines. I'm going to begin with you, Bob. But first, let's hear some of what Mike Pence told you and his former chief of staff, Mark Short, told you today in Iowa. I think there's been a lot of misperceptions about January 6th. I think Mike Pence has always said that he's a constitutional conservative. It is important for him to stand on the rule of law. And I think it was important to correct the record on several fronts. But I think equally important was to talk about how much he uh, admires the record of the Trump bench years. But the candidly, since the administration ended, Donald Trump has veered away from conservatism. Feels like any other year, the former vice president joining a presidential race would be major news. Did you get the sense, Bob, this was beginning with a bang or with a thud for Mike Pence? Scott, as someone who has so deeply covered the Capitol attack, uh, you know the significance of not only a former vice president running against a former president for the Republican nomination, but to have a former vice president talk in blunt terms about what happened that day and to frame the possibility of a future Trump presidency, a second Trump turn, uh, a term as a possible threat to American democracy. He said that Trump, in his view, does not respect the Constitution and in effect the rule of law that guarantees a peaceful transfer of power in this country. So you see Pence, who has at times shied away from talking about January 6th, took it straight on in his announcement speech. That underscores the significance of his message and his candidacy at this point. Did you get a sense he wants to or is trying to pivot off that topic? Not a lot of Republican primary votes to be won taking a hard line on January 6th. He is not trying to have it dominate his campaign. It's not like he's running only on how he handled January 6, 2021. But it's clear he's not going to run away from it. When we went into the news media filing center at the Pence event, we noticed that the wireless password was that Pence kept his oath, followed his oath under the Constitution to do his job as vice president and help to certify the election in Congress from 2020. And because of that, a little nod toward January 6th, it was evident uh, to me and other reporters there that Pence is someone who's going to be frank about what happened on January 6th, but he's also making an argument that the Republican Party should move back to how it approached politics in the Reagan era, focus more on conservatism, small government, less spending by the federal government than on populism and what he called the siren song of populism and grievance. Well, he's in Iowa. And other new contenders in New Hampshire, Chris Christie, former New Jersey governor, starting off his campaign. Caitlin, you were there. What did you make of the opening of the Chris Christie 2024 campaign? Well, I think what's really interesting is you have this week two candidates in Pence and uh, Christie who had a front row seat and an inside view into the Trump administration and how Trump operated. Christie, of course, was a top ally, advised him uh, during debate prep in 2016, helped lead his transition for a time. And now they are both saying it is time to move on. They are both trying to speak to voters who may share that sentiment, who may share the old school kind of Republican values and want something new beyond Trump. Uh, but, but they both have 
have the challenge of uh, this is a different Republican Party now than what they are used to. Christie last night was trying to really position himself as the toughest Trump critic in the race. Um, he held nothing back, went after him at every turn that he could. Um, I talked to uh, several voters in the crowd, most of whom identified as independent voters who were starting to just kind of get a sense of these candidates. And I think that's important in Iowa and New Hampshire. When you talk to voters, they are eager to kind of hear who else is out there. Uh, but the the challenge, however, is that this uh, Republican Party is, is just a different kind of party, and they have to kind of navigate that. They're both doing it in very different ways. Pence is trying to draw those contrasts, uh, but not as explicitly. And actually, Christie was kind of poking fun at his other rivals, saying, you know, you talk about turning the page or talking about new, needing new leadership, but you won't come out and say it. Christie is the one doing it, but also doesn't appear at this point to have a set constituency he can appeal to. But he really did articulate, didn't he, why he has to go through Donald Trump. Let's play a clip of what he said at the town hall in New Hampshire. The reason I'm going after Trump is twofold. One, he deserves it. And two, it's the way to win. So these two are not divided. And this is what I understand about the coverage, right? Well, I hope he's not just going out there to kill. No, I am going out there. Let me be very clear. I am going out there to take out Donald Trump, but here's why. I want to win. It's a real small crowd, Caitlin. He's got to get 40,000 people on his side to get into the debate stage and do that. What's the trajectory for that like for Chris Christie? Is that, is that feasible to his it, team? It's a difficult one, certainly, and that's why they are trying to get as much media attention as possible. Um, they have to, obviously, all the candidates have to have 40,000 donors, have to be polling at 1% in at least three polls. Um, he's very much focused on New Hampshire because of exactly what you just saw, the independent voters, people who he can speak directly to in this kind of environment. Um, but there, there is this challenge, and I think it will be interesting to see if he does make the debate stage you know, if these other candidates kind of let him just do the going after Trump, right? Does he provide them any sort of political cover? He'll take the hits while they can kind of focus on their own campaigns. That remains to be seen. He starts with his strategy being New Hampshire based. Back in Iowa, Bob, I'm trying to get a sense from Mike Pence whether it's an Iowa first because Iowa's first strategy or if he feels like Iowa might be make or break for him based on keeping this thing alive and getting it stronger before other states begin. Scott, after the event, I went up to former Vice President Mike Pence with our CBS News team, and I said, somewhat jokingly, are you going to be moving to Iowa? And he said, well, it's certainly going to feel like that, and I think that is going to be the case. He sees his path to the nomination as not maybe buying a house in Des Moines, but certainly getting a lot of hotel points from one of these hotels here in the area, because he needs to be in Iowa to remind evangelical conservative voters that he's one of them from the Midwest, shares their values, shares their faith in many, many respects. And he sees a playbook from the past that's appealing to him and his advisors. They look at Mike Huckabee, the former Arkansas governor in his run in 2008, did so well in Iowa. Rick Santorum, the former Pennsylvania senator in 2012, Ted, Senator Ted Cruz in 2016. They, they look at all of those experiences uh, combined as a way where Pence, yes, it's going to be slow and steady. Yes, it's an uphill climb. Yes, he might never even get close to winning the caucuses. But if he does have a shot amid coming political chaos, should Trump be indicted or should something else happen politically that's a real game changer, then Pence wants to be ready and positioned in Iowa especially. One quick question to you, Caitlin. I don't want it to be an afterthought that the governor of North Dakota has declared <laughs> as a candidate. I'm sorry, is he anything but an afterthought? Is there a different pathway I'm missing? You don't hear a lot of Republicans talking about him. He's obviously having to introduce himself to a lot of voters, and he did that in a video that looked more like an ad for North Dakota than anything else. Uh, but it just goes to show that, you know, there are going to be a lot of candidates in this race, and, you know, how does that affect the front runner? Um, there is a school of thought that the more candidates in this race, the better it is for Donald Trump. Um, but, you know, this is also shows that there is a lot of appetite, at least among Republicans, to at least get out there. And people have different reasons for running for president, right? Some is to boost your name ID, some is to um, position yourself for another position down the line, and then others actually do want to be president. So we'll see where that falls. Um, but North Dakota looks like a beautiful place to visit. You're just back from New Hampshire now and back to <laughs> D.C. Good work, Caitlin Huey Burns in Des Moines. Bob Costa, great work out there as well. And thank you both.